Coming up uh, from May 3rd to the 5th is a quite a distinctive film festival, uh, an event called Tilda, the Tilda Film Festival. It's the 10th anniversary, in fact, uh, of the festival. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the CEO of Tilda, Ro Bright. Ro, welcome to Movie Metropolis. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be able to chat with you today. Absolutely. And now this is such a distinctive uh, festival uh, celebrating trans and gender uh, and diverse uh, communities and uh, and so on. Tell me about the establishment of uh, Tilda and and, it is, and how it is such a unique uh, film festival based on what happens around the world. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we started in 2014. We came out of community, so it was very much... Um, uh, kind of film buffs and film curators and filmmakers who kind of got together and were like, we really need a film festival that shows our films and tells our, our stories. Because even though we have big uh, queer film festivals around the world, a lot of the time um, actually trans and gender expansive films or stories are not really showcased or seen or kind of given their space to shine. So they got together 2014 and did you know, from a bunch of volunteers, they got together, did the first festival, and I think it just proved how much we need to see our stories told. So it was a huge success. And so they continued and there was kind of different groups and different artistic directors who took over the festival uh, kind of through to 2020. And then when COVID, uh, we hit pause and hit a bit of hiatus um, because of kind of the complexities and pressures that COVID put on community. And uh, we did a big, a really big kind of survey and a review across all the community to ask and find out what was working and not working with the festival. And from that, we had a whole lot of feedback that then with Footscray Arts Centre, who came alongside us, we actually have completely remodeled the festival. We now have um, staff, we have our first board, who are entirely trans and gender diverse. And this is our first festival where we're kind of coming back. We're putting a really strong focus on particularly trans and gender diverse directors and collective filmmakers. And we're really kind of pitching to the rest of the world how fantastic our films are. Oh, how how interesting that is and, and so distinctive. Tell me about the term tilde. What does that refer to? Tilda, oh, this is what I love. This is, um, I guess, what's so great about coming out of community and the minds and brains of um, the community in 2014. Uh, tilde is, you know, on your computer or in mathematics, you have that little wave, uh, the actual tilde symbol. Yep. So tilde means an approximation between numbers, then uh, necessarily an equals. So it's an approximation. Ah. And so for us, it's an approximation between genders and ideas and so, um, so yeah, so we're a tilde. We, we take the expansive opinion and expansive look at what gender is. Um, and this year we're really excited because we're working with Sapphic Flicks, who are First Nations filmmakers for our big opening night. And so we're also looking at the expansiveness of what does gender mean for Indigenous cultures and for us as a community as we're shifting and changing currently in 2024. So Tilda is quite a beautiful name in regards to that approximation and the messiness of gender. Oh, I love it. That's a great explanation. I really, <laughs> I really appreciate that. <laughs> now, you've mentioned First Nations. I've noticed the focus on uh, First Nations uh, filmmakers, practitioners, etc. And uh, that's such a, an, an incredibly important aspect of uh, this year's festival. It is a huge part of this year's festival. Our entire programming and curatorial model this year is very much about sharing and uh, giving the curatorial choice of what we're needing to show to parts of our community. So our opening night, we're working with Sapphic Flex, who are two incredible filmmakers, and we kind of ask, what do you want to see? What do you need to say? What do um, how do we support you as filmmakers and the community to be able to grow and be seen? And so the team, Mirren and Jamie, came back and said, you know, we really want to get some 
commissions done. So we did some micro commissions with two filmmakers. Um, and we also are bringing over a leading filmmaker from Aotearoa, Ramon Taweke, who's probably one of the most incredible um, trans wahine filmmakers in uh, Aotearoa, who's she's bringing her knowledge, we're bringing our team's knowledge, we're bringing some of the leading trans um, First Nation filmmakers all together into a room and emerging and we're showcasing some of the best films made by Indigenous, gender diverse filmmakers. And so it's, it very much came from asking them, what would you like to do? What does this night need to be? And we've done that in a couple of different spaces throughout the festival where we've kind of uh, like our Gay 24 night, we handed it over and we're like, what do you need to say? And then the films we bring in are connected to what they want to say. Excellent stuff. And uh, so opening night sounds like it's going to be uh, quite a blast. <laughs> oh, it's, I can't wait. We're going to have food. We're going to have um, – we're going to celebrate these movies. We've got panel sessions talking about um, about what First Nation filmmakers, uh, trans filmmakers are wanting to do and say and the support that they need. Um, it's, yeah, we're really excited because a huge part of this, again, is the entire theme is about trans collectivism. So it's about being in a kind of collective way of making film and having that leadership and lens and decision making and trans gays and all that and the power of that is incredibly um it changes lives it changes us as filmmakers because we're many many times we're the only person in the room and that can create a lot of harm but whenever we're combined together the 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 it is I almost can't put it into words. It, it is just this incredibly powerful and beautiful thing. So, yeah, I'm very excited that that opening night is going to be a, a reflection of very much that way of thinking and making and coming directly from some of our great filmmakers here in Nam. Excellent. Uh, I'm, I'm quite intrigued by um, film festivals like yours. Uh, in terms of audience, are you hoping to diversify your audience so that you have a, a range of people to experience these films, or is it a little bit more segmented and, uh, and narrow? Oh, that's that's a really good question. I think because we are we are small and we are you know there is lots of film content within ours that is very much for our community. So. Um, uh, you know, there's definitely lots of content that makes more sense if that is a part of who you are or part of who um, you identify as. But also what is so beautiful about telling our stories is that it really opens up for anyone who is an ally, a loved one, um, someone interested to learn or understand what it is to be, um, to understand the world in which our community um, exists in. It's a wonderful space to be able to just truly come and immerse yourself into those stories and that world and to that culture. Um, and so it it is, we're small, but our ambitions and what we present is big and wide and we're very inclusive and we want to be inclusive because that's a huge part of um, showing the love and the queer identity that we engage with. Um, so it's it's both which is also tilde as approximation between two things. We are both. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we're really welcoming and really, you know, excited to share these films because they're such good films. They're incredible films and they are very, they are very trans. They're trans films. That's what they are. Okay. Look, that, that, uh, again, that sounds great, and, and, and I like that perspective that you have um, on the festival. I think that's, that's terrific. Let's talk about some of the films and, uh, uh, for example, The Alexander Ball. Yes. Oh, I love this. So this is a film created in Brisbane by Jessica, and what is so wonderful, and, again, curated and selected by the Sapphic Flex team, uh, the Alexander Ball is very much um, part of the ballroom scene culture that has kind of in the last 10 years grown um, across Aotearoa and Australia. And it's a place in which particularly Pacifica Māori, First Nations, Indigenous, trans folk come together and um, 
form houses and do balls, which are these kind of great events in which the houses compete, but really they're massive get-togethers and the chance, chances to be together. Um, and it was all originally inspired by um, the culture Paris is burning. So it's part of um, a culture that was established in America, um, but has found its own voice here in the last 10 years. So it's this incredible film that really dives into one particular house, that house's experience, their leadership, and it's deeply moving and really kind of showcases the just the wider spirit and the care and the um, excellence that is happening within the ballroom scene here um, in Australia. So it's a very special, um, very, very special film. Okay, very good. Uh, sounds like a real highlight. What about the film Black Trans Miracle? Oh, I am absolutely thrilled that Tanaye's film is the world premiere with us. The beauty of Black Trans Miracle is that it's a representation of a young trans man who is, it's a, it's a very, very simple thing of going out and buying a cake and kind of connecting to those that you love and all the things that make that incredibly, should be simple thing, incredibly complicated when you are trans and you are black and you are living here in Australia. And what is so beautiful about Tanya's, Tanya's work is it's so subtle and so gorgeous and intimate and incredibly sophisticated. And um, I know the first time I watched it, I was so deeply moved. So I'm incredibly honoured that the festival gets to have the world premiere of um, this beautiful film. And to me, it's kind of hits for those for those people who really love films like Past Lives and, you know, these kind of delicate interactions between people, that those moments that are just tender and intimate and seem almost domestic but actually are very layered, um, that is kind of Tenaye's work and that is um, what we're really proud to be able to present at the festival this year. Oh, well done on uh, on uh, getting the film. It sounds like a really interesting one. And, and another one that uh, struck me behind me is black. Yes, this is this is the joy of being a um because I'm a filmmaker myself, and ah. um, so I have connections with editors and directors and folks in New Zealand. And so as we, I'm currently working with Kushla Dillon, who's one of the uh, number one editors, and uh, I'm working with her as a producer on a project and. We were discussing and she had you know with these these little gems that people have hidden in their drawers um actually a film that she had worked on which um so it's paul johns who's an an icon artist in um new zealand and was kind of a part of that like andy warhol scene and you know quite a huge part of the art scene and in the 70s he had made footage, uh, he had collected 16 millimeter film of some of the queer community in Christchurch and kind of created this like really beautiful art house kind of footage. And then it kind of, and it's all inside in their homes, in their privacy, they've been their entire authentic selves. And that footage is kind of was kept private. I think it might have had a few showcases in the 70s, but it was kind of kept private. Um, and it's beautiful because it represents also Takatapui, like it's got a, a kind of different representations of a community. And then in the 90s, Kushla Dillon and Christy Cameron found or spoke to him, collected that footage and actually re-edited it into a short film that kind of did part of the festival circuit in 1999. And so um, it hasn't been since, seen since then. And so it was thanks to my, you know, working with Kutchler and Kutchler going, oh, I have this film, this trans film um, from New Zealand. Um, would you be interested in seeing it? And I was very excited to see it and then pass that on immediately to all of our programming team. And everyone was just fascinated by it. It's a really kind of, yeah, it's a beautiful really intimate experimental 
piece that is, um, yeah, we're just deeply thrilled to have it and to share that community again. Because in that particular program session, which is called Our Elders, we have Bahamians Black, which is 70s. Then we have uh, Man and Woman, which is the very first Australian documentary ever made about the trans community, which is from the 80s and has legends like Carmen Rupe. And then we have Joe Clifford, who is a trans elder from the UK and a beautiful experimental film of hers, which she did um, just recently. So we kind of get a progression of that community from 70s, 80s to today. How interesting, how well documented and how well described. I'm so, so intrigued, <laughs> intrigued by all of this. So, yeah, <laughs> terrific. Now, notice you've got a, the first episode of a TV series uh, called More Than This. Yes. So part of our um, our future session is a real focus on young trans filmmakers here in Australia. Um, and More Than This is made by Luca Gracie. He was the showrunner and um, he made this show straight out of high school. And he is incredible. He also stars in the series. It's incredibly sophisticated. It was picked up by Paramount+. Plus. It really kind of delves into kind of young high school kids and trying to um, how they engage with the world all the kind of, um, what does it mean to be queer, trans, but, you know, just a bunch of kids existing. And it's very, very well made. Like he, Luca is a rock star. Like it's just one of those kind of out of the box phenomenal talents. And um, so as part of that conversation in that with Tanaye and the kind of other young filmmakers that were coming through, um, we really wanted to bring in Luca to be able to also talk about his experience as a young filmmaker, um, he's now, uh, I think in like a week's time, he's starting shooting on his next short film, um, very young, incredibly talented, and also really engaging with what does it mean to be trans. Okay. Again, really, really interesting how you're drawing such a fascinating range of people together. <laughs> and and speaking of fascinating people, I notice you've got in conversation Bailey Turner, who's an intimacy coordinator for Neighbours. Now that is so interesting. Yes, Bailey Turner is a game changer. She is, I think, one of the most incredible people I have ever met. Uh, Bailey is taking this idea of how we as creatives and um, as a way of working and engaging in the workplace using consent and how do we use consent to engage better? And because that's a huge part of, as an intimacy coordinator working in films, mm. that's a huge part of the culture of, you know, developing safety in potentially, you know, violent or sexual moments. But what she's done is she's grown that to be beyond just, you know, performative moments into kind of how do we engage in a safe way creatively? How do we engage um, uh, in a really healthy way with everyone that we work with on sets in the way that we write, the way that we engage, like everything. And she has a practice and a way of teaching that, that just is so easy to understand and to put into practice so she's also our kind of consent consultant across the whole festival. And so she helps support us to work with our venue, if it's great arts. And so anyone who is coming into contact with a festival, that they get a chance to understand not just how we work with consent, but how do we work with um, our gender diverse community. And so this particular conversation for the panel, we're wanting to really kind of deep dive into how do we help and support trans women to survive and to thrive and to do their best work in the film industry on sets because, you know, there is quite a strong legacy of trans women in films, but there's been a lot of trauma and a lot of um, discrimination and a lot of things happen in those spaces. So we're bringing together um, Bailey as our facilitator and main speaker to be alongside Ramon Taweki from Aotearoa as a trans actor, trans woman, trans director. Um, also Dax Carney, who's a, a local actor and um, filmmaker. 
and Thea Rimenu, who was just in Savage Christmas, uh, First Nations trans women. So it'd be a conversation with these leading trans actors who are on our screens here and across the world to really engage with actually how do we create spaces for films so that trans women can really thrive, feel safe, but also be empowered and just what do we as a community need to do and what do we need as, as a film industry? What do we need to do? So it's it's quite a revolutionary kind of amazing conversation to have. Um, mm. So I'm very, yeah, I'm very, very proud and very lucky to have met Bailey because she is, yeah, just a, an incredible, incredible person. Excellent stuff. A really strong educational component, really. And in fact, a lot of the festival is educational in many respects for uh, certainly for for a broader audience. So that's uh, that that sounds terrific. Now, another film that struck me was a film called Green Castles. Yes. Oh, I can't. I can't wait to see it fully. It's a world premiere. They're in post production. Um, so this is uh, this is again. A big part of our strategy as a festival is also to engage internationally and engage in solidarity with our community. And so there's essentially about eight trans film festivals around the world. We're the only one in the Southern Hemisphere. And one of those film festivals is Translations Film Festival in Seattle. And um, the artistic director of that festival is Anto. And... Um, they're, I'm so thrilled, they're going to be coming over to Australia um, for the festival. And they are the director and one of the main characters, actors in Green Castles. And so it's one of their film projects that um, they've been working on for a long time. And we're really thrilled that we'll be able to do the world premiere. And it's very much the six kind of, the film is very much about how do we care for ourselves and this kind of flows out of that process of what we kind of that isolation that a lot of um, trans and gender diverse people experience, but kind of coming at that process of as we're changing and growing and shifting to who we are and the ways that sometimes we are in isolation and when we're in connection with others. And it's all kind of centered around the idea of our dreams that we have and also our um taking care of like plants, the things that we grow and the things that we care for and the elders and people around us who help care for us. So it's all kind of about care and it's really beautiful, beautiful film. And what I'm very proud of is that in solidarity, we've created an agreement with Translations Film Festival where we're doing a film exchange. So this year we're premiering their film, um, Green Castles, as part of our premiere shorts. And then Translations is going to premiere our two First Nations micro commissions at their festival in June. Mm -hmm. So we've done this kind of wonderful thing of like, you know, not trying to gatekeep or, you know, make our own opinions about what these films are. What's more important is that we're sharing films and giving opportunities to trans filmmakers to have international credits for their films so I can't wait for Anto to see the two commissions on our opening night and for those films to be played at Translations in Seattle to their community in June. Ah, that international cooperation is, is another excellent perspective that you're, you're doing so much in this festival by the sounds of it. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing. We're all, we're all very busy. My yeah. little team. We're working very, very, very hard. But I can all... see that. <laughs> Very proud and very excited because they're all really good films. Like, you know, they're just, there's so much good content and stuff that, you know, will just make you laugh and make you um, feel like, you know, this is, these are the stories we want to see and hear. And mm. so within us telling our stories, it is actually about joy and connection and, you know, the complexities of what does it mean to be trans and walk in this world. Um, and there's, yeah, there's a lot of sexiness. There's, there's a, lots of, you know, really, really funny stuff and really silly stuff and, you know, um, great representation of what does it mean to be trans and to be authentic. Okay, excellent. All right, I just wanted to mention the closing night uh, uh, where there's so much happening, including a film called Desire Lines. 
Yes, this is my proudest thing. One of, well, one of <laughs> the proudest um, accomplishments for this festival is that we we are doing the Australian premiere of Desire Lines. And Desire Lines, uh, we've got it uh, fairly fresh from Sundance this year. And it is a documentary crossover work, which really focuses on trans mask and trans men, um, gay trans men's experiences in bathhouses and the complexities around the relationships between gay men and trans gay men. And it is the conversations that are had through this documentary and the way that people are talking about their experiences, it just so beautiful and so honest and so engaging because a huge part of our community, particularly trans men and trans mask community, their stories are not really shown and heard. And they're um, it, this year we're incredibly proud of that we've got quite a strong trans mask representation, um, even across like our design work, like our all of our illustrations are designed by a local um, trans man, Ash Spittle. You know, like we've, we've really wanted to bring in their stories. And this film, Desire Lines, is kind of, it, it's the... I guess framework of it is it's about kind of an Iranian man who's um, going into an archive and that archive is about this particular bathhouse and it's kind of these reflections of his memory alongside a whole bunch of different representation of folks and their experiences with their sexual desire, with their bodies, with their um, engagement with trans men. It also brings up, you know, how... Um, AIDS affected the trans mass community and ensuring that those stories are told because a lot of the time that was kind of part of the community that their story was never told or you know it was never made space for so Desire Lines really deeply kind of um, goes into telling that story and telling it with a kind of earnestness and frankness that is just beautiful and Zylons is the one film like, you know, our programming team, we have a whole lot of different representation across trans femme, trans mask, non-binary. And so all of us have different experiences. And so different films tap into us differently that we go, oh, that's my lived experience or that connects to me. Uh, and we all have varying responses to all the different films. This Desire Lines was the one film that universally across all of everyone who contributed to the curation we're just like hands down this movie deeply connected to all of us and deeply connected to, yeah, that um, feeling feeling um, proud of our bodies, proud of our sexualities, proud of, you know, um, of our desires. Mm. And so in that way it's a stunning film and we're putting around it some panels, some performances, like, we're going to make that whole night really focused on community and um, having fun and engaging with our um, our sexiness. Okay. <laughs> I think you've tantalised uh, my audience uh, considerably. So uh, with all of that, that's, that sounds that sounds terrific. So, uh, Ro, let's, let's now talk about website, booking tickets, more details, that sort of thing. Yes, so you can go to our website, tilda.org.au, and that will lead you, or you can go to Footscray Arts, their website, um, and that's where actually the tickets, you can buy tickets through Footscray Arts, um, and everything is up there. We have certain events that are free, certain events that are, um, all of our tickets are low cost, and um, also if, you know, if anyone is... Um, we, we don't turn people away. So if this is, uh, you know, um, uh, do show up if you or reach out to us if you would like tickets because for us the most important thing is for community to see themselves. Um, and so please do reach out to us. You can contact us at info uh, at tilda.org.au. Excellent stuff. And so that's May 3rd to the 5th um, at the Tilda Film Festival. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, lots going on over those three days. That's uh, It's going to be a very busy time, I'm sure, for all of you. And, and Ro, just before I let you go, I love asking this of um, uh, film festival coordinators and all that sort of thing. 
Have you seen, apart from what's in the festival, of course, any other films or television shows or anything of late that has impressed you? Oh, well, because I'm a screenwriter, I have been, um, you know, uh, I, I do try to catch as much of other things as possible. But I did um, see Perfect Days the, the other day, which when Windows was just beautiful. And I, I really enjoyed that. Um, it really kind of set for me a sense of it, it, not just enjoying the different parts of our life, but how we look at the world. And so it was really beautiful and how we connect to people and how we are kind and how we look after each other. And um, I thought that, and the performances are stunning in that. So that that would probably be, in the last couple of weeks, that would be a film that I just absolutely adored. I can fully endorse that. It is uh, an excellent <laughs> film. <laughs> and I uh, also endorse the Tilda Film Festival. And uh, we've been speaking to the CEO of uh, Tilda, Ro Bright. Ro, thank you so much for talking with me. Ah. Uh-huh. No, thank you. I love talking about this stuff. So <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Hope it all goes well. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>